Hello everyone and thank you for coming back to my channel. That is Deb Chanel's 48 World and I am Deb Chanel. Yes, I wouldn't I wasn't taping yesterday. I was tired, y'all. But y'all won't see me a lot on the tube this holiday season. Okay. I'm just saying, cause today I took my holiday celebration and I don't go back until the 2nd of January. So I'm real excited about that. Guys, trying to get the house together for the holidays and just trying to be in the holiday spirit. Because you know the ones that have to sit and cook for the family and then you have to make sure you don't got presents for certain people and Ooh, the rigmarole. And the only thing I want to do is just sit down, look at TV, and catch up with you guys. Okay? That's all I want to do. That's all I want to do. But, you know, I had told y'all I was working on the story that I was trying to get together because I had lost it. Because it had been some time ago that this particular person had did a segment on his show called The Mike and Donnie Harrell Show. Because, you know, it's Mike Hill and Donnie for real, they co-host the show. Uh, hence, their particular show that they are airing on FoxSoul.tv. Okay, y'all go check them out. They have some interesting stories and they have some other um, people on there that actually talk about different subjects. They have dinner, different interviews with local celebrities as well as uh, other celebrities celebrities that live in other states and they talk about social issues and this that and the third okay so let me give you a little uh history on how they put their show to, together what they say their show is all about it says the mike and dunny show is a hard-hitting no sense or no nonsense show that will have real talk about the mindset behind some of the discussions black men and women make in their lives. So that's their pretty much put together format of how they exist, what they exist for, and what they will be covering when we're talking about subject matters or subject topics. And the um, individuals uh, that will come on, not necessarily all of them are uh, celebrities. They're like local people coming in Tell them what they're doing for the community or what has happened to them in the community and they want to bring out awareness. So that's pretty much their format of their show or what they're going on. But I want to talk about this one that he did. Um, I couldn't figure out what time it was because uh, of what um, month it was aired in. But I'm pretty sure it, was, it had to be in December or late November. But it all had uh, something to do about cheating. And you remember I had told you, I think on a previous video, I think my last video I had did on the housewives or something. And I was making a comparison or similarity to what Mike Hill was saying about Cynthia. And Cynthia only been married one time, okay? And we know she had an out of wedlock baby, which is Noel, by uh, Leon. I think his name is Robinson, okay? Facts checkers, get in there and let me know. Uh, but anyway, I thought Mike was married one time and divorced one time but honey lo and behold i don't know how i got on them uh but it, like i said more, more more than normally it probably came across my social media feed and i was just like okay let me see what this is all about see if i want to talk about it or whatnot and it was very interesting he had dropped some tea on his own self and if you're one of his followers or viewers of any of his content whether he's over there doing fox sports espn commentary or he's on this new talk show um that's airing called fox soul dot tv i think it's on instagram facebook and youtube but i went actually to www.foxsoul.tv and found the latest articles he's done and i also um will come back with a follow-up story that he did with um steve curry i think his name is I think his name was Steve Curry. No, it might not mean Mike Curry, I believe. I think it is. Uh, he used to play on um, oh, that sitcom show. Ooh, I can't think of it. Hanging with Mr. Cooper. Y'all know him. He used to be an NBA uh, 
um, basketball star. I forgot what team he played for, and then he got into showbiz, which is, you know, the entertainment industry of, um, what do you call it, sitcom shows. And uh, he, yeah, had some interesting negative takes about Steve Harvey. And I'm just trying to loop it all around to see what type of people we're dealing with when we're talking about Steve Harvey, Cynthia, and Mike Hill. And if you got somebody that I'm sure known Steve and the comedian type were a lot longer than Mike Hill, uh, and I'm just guessing, I don't really know that for, uh, for it to be a fact, but I'm just saying when Steve was kind of a nobody, he was trying to make his ranks going up into the comedy world, which made him who he is today. And he got shows to stand third, but I don't still, I don't like Steve because I heard some nasty stuff he did with Bernie Mac. And, and I, I don't like that because when it comes to Bernie Mac, to me, uh, besides uh, Robin Harris, that really died before his time because I think he would have had uh, a bigger platform than either Bernie Mac nor Steve Harvey or Chris Rock would have ever dreamed of. He, he would have been up there with Richard Pryor and, um, Red Fox, that type of um, uh, historical or historian type person he was to the comedian world. Um, the late Robin Harris. Y'all don't know who he is. Google him up. And I'm sure you'll find a plethora of information regarding his uh, entertainment career in the comedian world. But he's basically also known for baby kids. <laughs> So anybody know nothing about, you know, comedy or whatever, y'all go check out Baby Kids. You'll know what I'm talking about. And then he was uh, also in past um, movies like, um, dang, what was that movie called? House Party. I don't think he went, I think it was on the House Party 1. I don't know if he was in 2 and 3. I don't think so because I think uh, the, the, the ending of, um, house party one he ended up dying and then they were having a funeral for him like on the the second and he kid was supposed to be getting married or something I forgot what happened in the third one but I might be mixing them up but I know he died and that's he was supposedly had a died and they had a funeral and all this and then kid was getting married I don't know if that was the second or third uh, installment of house party but yeah it was a good thing but just getting on back to Mike Anyway, he opened up to the public, or at least his platform. I guess he's trying to get a lot of salacious stories to keep his name out there to show us that he's a formative uh, force to be reckoned with, not just in the sports arena, but he's trying to make it into the entertainment world where he's doing his own thing and um, trying to be like a spokesperson or a commentary or correspondent in the media social, socially trending uh, type of atmosphere so I could commend him on that because I don't see Cynthia flaunting everywhere but it seems like he always uh, put her in there if he isn't showing her he's talking about her to make a reference to yeah she's on the real house she's one of the stars on the real housewives of Atlanta and he's playing back off of that instead of just being himself like he don't talk about her in the sports world we know him from the sports world now he's introducing us to another piece of him where it's not sports related it's just like a dialogue between black people and the issues that we face as a society and a race. So with some commentary spin on different subject genres that he wants to bring out on his show. But anyway, he opens up uh, talking about his past marriages. And I'm like, wait a minute, I thought he was only married one time with two kids. Now how did he have two marriages with two kids? Did he have one in each marriage or did, I mean, what's going on? But like, I only have a 57 clip a 57 second clip so if anybody had the other because i've still been trying to find the whole actual interview that he did you know they're gonna chop it up because of commercials and just that in the third but it should give you at least a 30 minute run but um i'm gathering or assuming he's going to be talking about cynthia when he talks about it is when you find that one person that it makes sense the whole union part of being married or just being in a relationship and it starts opening up new avenues. He says something to that effect. Uh, I'm just summarizing, you know, going off my own edification of what I saw and or heard in his perspective of him trying to explain the third time is going to be the right one because it's with Cynthia. You know, they mash well. She tells him everything he wants to hear. This, that, and the third. He needs to hear it to be a better person, be a better man. But my thing is, you ain't got the Lord in you. 
I'm sorry, I, 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 you know, or you, some type of uh, spirituality that harness you to do good for others as well as for yourself. Because can't nobody really make you. You got to make your own self. You got to be happy within your own self to be even compatible of thinking about bringing somebody else in your space, in your environment, in your essence. You know what I'm saying? You got to be already happy because other people can't make you happy or you'll be dependent upon them. And when they're not in your life anymore, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? So, y'all want y'all to listen to this clip and y'all tell me what y'all think about it. Because I don't tear it too long. It's on my little computer saying I don't talk 10 minutes, okay? But that's how we do over him at uh, Deb Chanel's 40s where it's a family affair. When I have things to talk about, I come to you all, okay? Now, I may make a mistake. Well, I won't say a mistake. I might talk a little bit about my real family that I'm, you know, with every day dwelling with in my home environment. I might, you know, talk to them a few times, but, you know, my mom is 80 years old. She don't be caring about none of this stuff. She just be worried about the Lord and getting into heaven and all that thing. And I be like, mm -hmm, I'm with you too, mama. But, mm, you know, what's happening on them streets of Atlanta, girl? But she'll tell me everything about what's happening with Shoe Nidell, who shot who. You know, she tell me everything about uh, fake news that we look on our local TV programming stations where they just tell us stuff after stuff. And all of it's horrific. Somebody got shot. Somebody got kidnapped. Somebody got. Uh, stay up just you know a lot of stuff on or she goes to the weather where the weather's gonna be too chilly or it's gonna be uh astronomically cold you know you know put your right gear on when you go out you know all that kind of stuff mothers do so uh we have a little toss up like do i want to hear her talk about news or do i want to go and talk with my other family which is you all about trending topics you know because then i got my daughter who's 28 right now she's just in the she got engaged on thanksgiving and everything is in her world and everything is about her future husband child so she ain't paying me attention none of those we can have a conversation till they get to either be hungry or they want to be petted or they find something to bark about because somebody's getting too close to the house. I'm like, okay, so let me go to my YouTube family and talk to them because they only make sense in, in my world of where I'm going, which is gossiping and, and talking about trending topics. And we talk about these celebrities acting crazy up here. But like I said, it's the Mike and Donnie Show. Go check them out. They're on uh, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. And um, their show is called... Uh, well, I just showed you what the show was called, the Donnie and, or the Mike and Donnie uh, show. But it's um, Donnie Correll and Mike Hill show. They co-parent co that show over there. But anyway, uh, let me let you listen to this clip of this video. Okay, it's only 57 seconds. And I just want to see what y'all think about what he said about he was a no good dog. Okay, and he's been married two times. And we want to understand, do we really want that for Cynthia Bailey? Does she, is she not listening to this man? You know what I'm saying? Because you don't just, you know, start over anew the next day. Unless you've done some work, some homework on your demeanor, your behavior, your characteristic, what you feel about the opposite sex, you know, just in general marriage, you know, connecting. But here we go. Let's see here. And I was never a good husband. The second time I was a good husband for the first eight or nine years. But after a while, I wasn't getting certain things at home. Never initiated sex, never made me feel sexy, never made me feel good about myself. Um, only time she ever told me she loved me was when I was walking out the door, but I never felt love. Right. And it was, right. nothing was happening at home. Right. And even when I would ask her for sex, it would be like, uh, can I get a rain check? Like, fuck, can we get a rain check? Right. <laughs> Say the damn right. store. Right. Say the damn Piggly Wiggly. You know what right. I mean? And so that kept on happening, and I did not feel good about myself, and I became depressed. So I understand where he's coming from. I started gaining weight, and after a while, I did not want to cheat. Because I had been faithful for a long period of time. And I tried to stay there because my first marriage, I was a dog. I really was a dog. So I was trying to do it the right way. And then eventually, you run into somebody that tells you everything that you want to hear. Okay, so that's where it, it um, ends. Because like I said, it was a 57-minute or second clip. And that's basically what he was saying. But... I just want y'all to hear him confess, you know, that he had been married two times because a lot of people were saying on the social media uh, realms, on stories I may have done on them on The Real Housewives of Atlanta, they felt he was only married once. But no, here he, again, he says he's been married twice. Twice 
twice, and I was never a good husband. The second time, I was a good husband. For the first eight and nine. I've been married twice, and I was never a good husband. The second time, I was a good husband for the first eight and nine years. But after a while, I wasn't getting certain things at home. Never initiated sex, never made me feel sexy, never made me feel good about myself. Um, only time she ever told me she loved me was when I was walking out the door, but I never felt love. Right. And it was, right. nothing was happening at home. Right. And even when I would ask her for sex, it would be like, oh, can we get a rain check? Like, oh, can we get a rain check? Right. <laughs> Say the damn right. store. Right. Say right. the damn pick me with me. You know what right. I mean? And so that kept on happening, and I did not feel good about myself, and I became depressed. So I understand where he's coming from. I started gaining weight, and after a while, I did not want to cheat because I had been faithful for a long period of time, and I tried to stay there because my first marriage, I was a dog. I really was a dog, so I was trying to do it the right way. And then eventually, you run into somebody that tells you everything that you want to hear. Okay, so... <coughs> Hopefully you all heard him confess by his own volition that he had been married twice and um, he's been um, unfaithful several times, I guess, out those two marriages. And the interesting part, he was saying he didn't want to cheat. I'm like, well, okay, what made you cheat then, bro? Just because you have the thought in your mind that you can cheat. And whether you get away with it or not, that's not really the concern at the time. Because it seems like you just destroyed that first woman's, um, what do you call it? esteem self-esteem or just her idea of marriage or maybe y'all both had a part because so I, I don't know who you were married to initially or even if these are your kids mothers that you're referring them to so just to even have you say oh child i was i dogged your mama out you know that first marriage if any kids developed from that first marriage or maybe the kids developed from the second marriage but he was talking about that um wife too about she didn't care to even tell him she loved him or he was the best thing uh out there smoking like cornbread on butter or you know what i'm saying something good comparing it to so i'm like is this what he do do he go around talking about his exes and all these exes his mothers uh of his children because that's not a good look mike that's not a good look at all and then if in fact, you were talking about Cynthia, meaning this third person that don't came into your life, probably showed you love, probably showed you affection, probably showed you whatever, you know, for the positiveness. And you're talking about it was Cynthia. Well, honey, maybe Cynthia learned from Peter because Peter was saying she wasn't this, that, and the third as well. So maybe her learning from Peter taught her to be a better person and a better wife or partner for you. So, and she only had that one experience with Peter, you know, breaking her down. But you don't have two women. So I'm like, are you like Elizabeth Taylor? But you're the man version where you're going to marry till you get it right? I don't know, Cynthia. And then you got him hooked up with your daughter. He, she spoke be out there living with him, uh, festering or want to manifest her career in the entertainment industry. I don't know what she's trying to be, a model. Or y'all had said what well, he said. She was a... Uh, a personal a youtube personality now he's trying to get it launched off for her she's trying to launch it off herself i'm like i don't know what baby girl know we're trying to do because she had so much promise in our eyes because they were showing her but maybe that was just fake and fraudulent that she wanted to be a veterinarian or uh, some type of physician uh whether it's a vet or whether it was something dealing in medicine uh for human beings not just pets and then that just went to Shitsville, in a sense. And went off to college and couldn't make it past the first semester. Tried it again. Couldn't make it that semester. So she just said, okay, I'll start a YouTube channel. Now, granted, she's still below 23. She could still make a difference, go back. Maybe she just needs to stay in Atlanta and go to school. Because it seems like with Cynthia still want to play a major role in being in the Real Housewives of Atlanta franchise. They say it's about six to nine months out of their life. They're fooling around with taping and uh, doing marketing promotion for the Real Housewives of Atlanta. So they really must stay in Georgia in a sense, unless they gonna do that commuting where it's gonna cost a lot when you're talking about air travel or 
car travel or just they're going to be racking up a lot of miles either they're on ground or in the air or here a train or bus boat i don't know but for cynthia she plans on which to me is all of them bread and butter when it comes to the cast members on the real housewives of Atlanta because ain't none of them said a shit it's been 12 good years or it's been 12 good seasons I'm finna do something else. I'm finna let this go. Cause I done built my empire. I don't I got enough. Thank you, Bravo. Y'all been wonderful. Maybe I'll make guest appearances, but I got the bounce. You know what I'm saying? It ain't like Kim Zoziak over there. She said, oh, I got my own thing going. Bravo, y'all can keep that. Even though y'all gonna give me my spin. I mean, I find it very interesting. How did Kim Zoziak get her own show and has been able to be maintaining? I'm guessing because she has a lot of support from her viewers, her fans, uh, her entourage or whatever. But she definitely have been lasting uh, on her own show, Tardy for the Party. So I congratulate her and salute her. I'm like, girl, what's the formula? Because you been left or uh, Real Housewives of Atlanta and then you come back as guest appearances or maybe you might come back for a season or two but it's not like you, it's your bread and butter your bread and butter is your whole thing with Tardy with the party and it's been going on and on like an energizer bunny over that camp I'm so proud of you girl I'm like is it white privilege I don't know girl I don't know what they're saying in the street but hey I've partaked of your show sometime and I've got my last my little kiki and whatever I might need to go back over there and check and see what you're doing with them girls you know you had that little last little girl that's probably just in grammar school, if not. Yeah, she's in her formative years still. Maybe pre K or first grade or something. You had her having lipstick and makeup over there. Yeah, I did a little article on that because that was foul, Kim. That was foul. But anyway, I'm going to let that go. Okay, we're going to press on. We're going to have to come over there and see what are you doing. I'm going to come visit Joe's house and see what's going on and see if everything's kosher. Okay, I had a kid growing up too fast. Life going to hit them in the butt and break them down as much as they can, depending on how far they want to go and how far they want to succeed. Okay, and their own stability is their family because they're the one that love them, going to be there for them regardless if they fail or succeed or just be status quo. They still going to have that love of their family and good friends that they've, you know, woven into their life as family because the world don't care. They don't care about what color you are. They don't care about what um, ethnicity you are. They don't care what age you are. Mm -mm, honey, if it's a lesson to be learned, trust me, if your family don't teach you and guide you and navigate you, honey, the world will. And it'll be like a roller coaster ride as we have many bumps and bruises. But that would be your caliber to say. You definitely ran this race and you ran it well or you didn't run it well depending on the outcome, okay? But that's all I have for this video, y'all. Y'all tell me what y'all think about Mike Hill confessing that he done been married more than one time, got two kids. We don't even know if them two kids by their first wife, their second wife, or by both wives, okay? We don't know. We don't know. And then Cynthia up there sitting up there trying to marry this man in the future, she says, October. Oh, 2020, honey. That's what she said. I'm like, mmm, child, please. Child, smell the coffee. Look at the roses, honey. Call a spade a spade. Are you sure? He looking like a little Jekyll and Hyde to me, girl. A little Jekyll and Hyde. Pump your brakes because I want you to be happy, but I don't know if you're going to be happy with this man, but it's still your choice. It's your choice. It's your, you know, you thirsty out there, honey, because you don't say it on so many episodes of season 12. I think from the first, and we up at the seventh episode, and you still talking about you thirsty. You love this man. You, this is your man. You got to go for him. You throwing caution to the wind. You 52, and you just feeling yourself, girl. You feeling like you ain't going to never have nobody else. If you don't get on this train and ride it, and ride it. And I'm like, this picture freezing. Ain't nobody got time for that, Cynthia. Slow your road, girl. Slow your road. You're too old to be acting, you know, acting all willy-nilly over love, honey. What, like Tina Turner said, what's love got to do, got to do with it? What's love but a second-hand emotion? What's love got to do, got to do with it? Who needs a heart when a heart can be broken? Mm -hmm.
yeah, honey, let's tell the time, girl. Yeah, what love got to do with it, honey? It's called no romance without the finance. Okay, so we didn't, girl, that's all I'm going to say. So y'all get and tell me down in them comments what y'all feel about this commentary on the subject matter. Now, how I pre presented it to y'all because, you know, it's all trending over here and it's all from my perspective. Don't know if it's true. It's all allegedly, okay? So y'all get down and tell me what y'all think about Mike Hale and this situation where he want to marry, make sense of his third bride, honey. Will it last forever? Last forever and ever. Don't let I know who. I know, I know. Uh, that's key swear, honey. I'm improvising. I'm ab living over here. But yeah, will it last forever? Or is he just taking her down another dirty road? We don't know where we're in. We know she got a nice carrot ring over there. And that's what they're saying that the ring she has. I ain't a sparkly girl. Everything that glitter ain't gold. But that's all I have for this particular interview. And I'll see y'all for a new video coming up shortly. Stay tuned. Bye bye. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Let's blow up together. Let's subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Let's blow up together. Let's blow up together. Okay. Oops. Sorry about that, y'all. We don't need to add additional noise. Okay, bye-bye.